<clears throat> Welcome back to online practical three on determination of refrigeration load in commercial onion cold storage. Uh, this is a case study type experiments and mainly divided into two parts. This session will discuss the part one of the experiment. Uh, the content of this session, first of all, we'll discuss the sample case study uh, based on the basic design data. Based on the design data, uh, the layout of the cold storage will be developed. Refrigeration load estimation will be done, followed by conclusion. And finally, we'll discuss the problem statement of each division because in, in the case study, we have uh, taken onion as a product, but in actual problem statement, uh, division wise, the products different. So that will be discussed in the end. Uh, cold storage uh, <clears throat> is a type of, either is a type of refrigeration or a type of air conditioning. If the cold storage controls uh, temperature only, then it is application of refrigeration. If it controls uh, temperature along with uh, humidity of the air, air, as well as the purity of the air, as well as the movement of the air, then it becomes application of uh, uh, air conditioning. Uh, so generally for cold storage applications, uh, they are designed to maintain simultaneously a desired low temperature along with relative humidity and air movement within a insulated chamber for preservation of food products like fruits, vegetable, fish, meat, poultry, dairy products, yeast, etc. as well as the life-saving drugs, uh, blood plasma and vaccines, serums, etc. So especially for storing of fruits, vegetables, fish, where uh, in addition to the temperature, the humidity is also controlled. Uh, then it becomes application of air conditioning. But for the production of other dairy products, they are mainly a packaged foods like milk or other dairy products, yeast, as well as some drugs, blood plasma. So there only temperature need to be controlled. So that, then the cold storage becomes application of uh, uh, refrigeration. Actually, India is the uh, largest country of uh, production of vegetable is concerned. And it is the second largest, uh, largest country, as well as the production of fruits are concerned. Uh, so that's why uh, the application of cold storage in India is very vast. Uh, holding food products at low temperature within the cold room helps to retard the product deterioration by slowing down the growth of microorganisms and chemical changes. And important design criteria is to maintain high RH value within a refrigerated chamber which mainly reduces water losses and prevents shrinkage and discoloration of products during the storage. The recommended storage temperature, relative humidity, air movement depends on the type of products to be preserved. Uh, these recommended design storage conditions and storage life for different food products are available in ASHRAE refrigeration handbook. Uh, that the same PDF is attached in the submission section. And uh, it can be available in application catalogs of various refrigeration equipment manufacturers as well. The basic design data for this cold storage is given. Uh, so for example, indoor, design, indoor and outdoor design conditions. Uh, so outdoor design conditions are considered as 40 degrees Celsius DVT and 40% RH. While the indoor design conditions, they, uh, it is mainly based on product to be stored. In this case, uh, in the sample case, onion is the product. So for onion, the recommended indoor conditions are 2 degrees Celsius DBT and 70% RH. Then the construction material properties are given. A brick wall of thermal conductivity and thickness, both are given. Then ceiling, it's a concrete roof of its thermal conductivity and thickness is given. Then the dimensions of the cold storage is given. Here the total area available is 12,000 square feet. And the height recommended is 8.4 meter, that is a cold storage. And the type of insulation to be used, puff insulation is recommended of 100 mm thickness and 0.023 watt per meter Kelvin is the type of insulation. Inside and outside heat transfer coefficient values are given, that is 7 watt per meter square Kelvin is the inside heat transfer coefficient, while 30 uh, watt per meter square is the outside heat transfer coefficient. Slightly outside heat transfer coefficient given is higher value, means considering the windy conditions. 
the allowance for sun effects are also given uh, mostly these allowances are available in design data book 4 degree celsius is for east and west wall 3 degree celsius for south 0 degree celsius for north and 9 degree celsius for roof so maximum solar transmission happens through roof and so i'm followed by east west and south so no heat transmission taking place from north side uh, then internal load or the lighting load uh, again this particular value we can take from design data book for the cold storage that is 15 watt per meter square the electric motor load is 10 percent of the total tr occupancy load uh, both sensible uh, there are 12 up to 12 persons working in the cold storage for loading and unloading purpose so when the person is working so it dissipates sensible as well as latent heat so per person values are also given that is 200 watt and 30 watt respectively then the air changes per hour that is actually the leakage rate that is 0.25 especially for cold storage it is always less than one it is recommended these values also we can get from uh, design data book for normal air conditioning room it these values are uh, 5 to 10 but for cold storage uh, the high value is not recommended so uh, accordingly now we have to prevent this heat leak uh, then the product in this case it's onion product so product respiration rate in this case it is 0.1 watt per kg then specific heat of the onion is given then the storage capacity of the product uh, actually it 8400 so cold storage is to be designed to store uh, 8400 metric tons of onion at the same time uh, the pre-cooling capacity is also recommended that is 1400 metric ton pre-cooling capacity is uh, required for the cold storage incoming product temperature is uh, considered as 35 degrees celsius and cool down time is 72 hours uh, so this, this is a basic design data is provided so some data uh, uh, the consultant or designer decides some data geographical area some product and some taken from the design data book relevant to the cold storage uh, then the based on the design data book uh, so based on the design data uh, the layout of the cold storage can be developed so the layout uh, as per the available area that that is 12000 square feet so the rectangle of one 120 square feet multiplied by 100 square feet so this is a larger site 120 square feet this is 100 square feet uh, so this the entire area is divided into six chambers uh, as this is a 120 square feet so divide into three that is 40 each this is 100 so 40 20 and 40 so 20 feet by 150 uh, 120 feet is the passage provide for especially loading and unloading so this side we this is east this is west this is north and this is south so as per the orientation it is recommended to have a larger side uh, uh, facing south north and south and the smaller sides facing east and west this is the passage provided so this is entry side and this is this side we can uh, install the mechanical equipments of the refrigeration and the loading so each chamber of size is 40 feet by 40 feet so the uh, this is the layout which says that the smaller sides are exposed to east and west and the mechanical room is on the west side and the entry from the is this side. Uh, then the Total load on the cold storage, uh, uh, if we identify, there are four types of loads. So the solar transmission heat gain through the walls, uh, infiltration of outside air, internal loads, and product loads. So these are the four types of refrigeration load associated with cold storage. Uh, as far as the solar transmission heat gain is concerned, uh, this is a, in tabular form. We can see these are the various sites ceiling floor north east wall south wall and in order to calculate the areas so we can write for ceiling uh, this is a side of 120 square feet 120 feet this side is 100 feet uh, so converted into meters 
So 120 feet is equivalent to 36.57 and 100 feet is equivalent to 30.48 meters. So ceiling and floor uh, side uh, areas are same. So we multiply by B. So ceiling and floor areas are same. Then this we can consider as a north side. This is south side. Again in north side, this is a face area. So this is north wall. So A side is again 120 feet, that is 36.57. And the height is 8.4 meter. Same is the south wall. Uh, then east and west. So east and west side. So again, uh, this is the west side. So as far as the west side is concerned, so this is a smaller side. So that is 30.48, that is 100 feet. And the height is 8.4. So these are the sides. Uh, then the temperature difference, uh, that is the difference between outside temperature and inside temperature. Outside temperature is 40 degrees Celsius. Inside temperature is 2 degrees Celsius. For floor, it is considered as 0 degrees Celsius. Means there is no temperature difference because, uh, between, because there is no uh, ambient below the floor. So it is considered as no temperature difference. So other uh, walls experiencing 38 degrees Celsius steady. Uh, considering the solar correction factor given in the data, so ceiling is a nine correction factor. For east and west, that is four degrees Celsius. And for south, three, north and floor, that is zero corrections. So addition of both gives us an equivalent temperature difference. So 38 plus nine. So similarly, equivalent temperature difference of other walls are also calculated. Then area is calculated by product of these two. We can calculate the area. The U value is calculated because these are the composite walls. Uh, so the wall consists of uh, the brick as well as insulation. So they are thermal resistances along with the inside and outside air also causes some convective resistances. So based on that U value is calculated. And uh, then uh, the heat gain is obtained by UATD. So the product of these three uh, gives us the heat gain from each side. So this is the total heat gain that is 20.40. So this is the solar transmission heat gain through walls. So around 20.40 kilowatt is the load on the system due to transmission. As far as infiltration is concerned, uh, some air uh, comes inside uh, the cold storage that is outside air of very high temperature that is 40 degrees Celsius as well as the moisture content is 30%. So enters the cold storage because of door openings for loading and unloading of products and also due to infiltration through even minor cracks around the doors. Uh, so we cannot avoid the door opening because during loading and unloading it is bound to happen. But to avoid certain loads, uh, uh, air curtains are used at the entry. But when the person comes inside, uh, that air curtain breaks and some heat leak takes place. So in order to calculate this heat leak, uh, we have to locate the outside condition and inside conditions here. Uh, so outside condition is 40 degrees Celsius and 40% RH, while the inside condition is 2 degrees Celsius and 70% RH. Uh, so based on that, we can calculate because this outside air comes inside, uh, so it that heat is transferred both in the form of sensible heat as well as latent heat. So accordingly, outside air sensibility is calculated. That is mass flow rate into enthalpy difference. Mass flow rate is the volume of the chamber divided by specific volume gives us mass. Multiplied by air changes per hour uh, uh, gives us mass flow rate per hour. And divided by 36.0300 gives us mass flow rate in kg per second. Enthalpy difference for sensible heat gain, that is HA minus H1. Consequently, the volume of the one chamber is, uh, that is 12.2 meter by 12.2 meter, that is 40 feet by 40 feet of height 8.4. It comes around 1250.25 meter cube. This is for one chamber. There are six chambers. So it becomes 75101.5 meter cube. That is the total volume. Specific volume corresponding to outside air is uh, obtained from psychrometry chart. So we get this value from psychrometry chart that is 
corresponding to this outside condition is 0.92. If the outside condition is different, this value will be different. Then uh, the sensibility is obtained. That is 21.8 kilowatt. Similarly, outside air latent heat gain is obtained by mass flow rate into enthalpy difference. So in this case, the enthalpy difference is HO minus HA, that is in latent heat. It comes around 22.93. So the total infiltration load is 44.73 kilowatt. So this is the second type of load. Third type of load is internal load, that is lighting load. So light load factor, it is given in this problem statement, but it it is available in design data book also. So uh, based on that, the floor area, that is area of one chamber into number of chambers. So it comes around 893.04 meters square floor area. Lighting load comes around 13.4 kilowatt. Occupancy load is uh, sensible heat plus latent heat. So there are 12 persons working. Sensibility is 200, latent heat is 30. So it comes around 2.0. 76 kilowatts so comparatively less load is there that is internal load so the total internal load comes around 16.16 kilowatt then the last but uh, not the least that is a product load so product load is mainly uh, there are two categories pre cooling load and respiration load pre cooling load that is uh, the heat removed from the product to bring its temperature to the storage temperature that is calculated by uh, formula mcp delta t so in this case this is mass of onion cp of onion into temperature difference that is incoming temperature minus storage temperature divided by pull down time because that temperature will be reduced to storage temperature in given speculated time in this case it is given 72 hours converted into seconds so here the total pre cooling load is per capacity is uh, 140 1400 uh, metric ton, so that converted into uh, then 3.77 is a specific heat. And then uh, incoming temperature is 35 degrees Celsius and storage temperature is 2. And then the load comes around 191 TR. Uh, the respiration load. Uh, after after pre-cooling, then the product is stored for long duration in order to maintain the same temperature. But uh, during the storage period, uh, the product generates some heat that is called as a respiration heat. So that load is also vary from product to product. In this case, the unit reaction heat is 0.1 because some uh, for respiration some heat is generated. So in this case, it is 0.1 watt per kg. So that comes around 840 kilowatt or 238.84 TR. Then the total product load uh, is comes around 430 TR, that is 1512 kilowatt. So this is a product load. Then the total heat gain is the addition of all four, that is 1593.26 kilowatt. 10% of that is the motor load, that is 159.32 kilowatt. 5% uh, safety considerations gives us 87.63. Thus, the grand total refrigeration load becomes 1840 kilowatt. And in TR, that is 523.3 TR. So, this is the uh, total refrigeration load of for storing onion of uh, 8400 metric ton holding capacity as well as 1400 metric ton for chilling capacity. And finally, the conclusion of uh, this, that is the maximum load on the refrigeration system is uh, 523 TR, which generally occurs during combined chilling and holding of products in the chambers, that is onion, especially. Uh, if there is no pre-cooling load, then uh, the load reduces to 322, that is only a store a holding load, that is a regular load on the system. Uh, this cold storage is designed for onion, but it can be used for storing other vegetables as well. So uh, uh, we have to investigate this, uh, how much other vegetables or other products can be stored and what should be the capacity of them for the given. So this cold storage is designed based on the onion product. It is especially for the onion. Now uh, we have to install the system 
of capacity around 530 TR. Uh, out of that, 330 TR is uh, holding capacity and 191 is the pre-cooling capacity. Uh, now this is about uh, the sample case study where we have discussed the onion. Now uh, on the similar line, you have to estimate the refrigeration load for the product which is prescribed for your batch or your division. So product to be stored for A division is cucumber where the inside design conditions to be taken is 10 degrees Celsius and 95% RH. For B division is carrots where the indoor design conditions to be 0 degrees Celsius and 100% RH. For C division it is potatoes where indoor design conditions are 4 degrees Celsius and 100% RH. Uh, so these are the conditions you have to consider as well as the product. So based on the product, the product properties also vary. So respiration rate you have to get from design data book or from the Google, same as the specific heat. Initially you consider the same uh, product that is storage capacity remains same uh, like the discuss in the co uh, case study. It is 8400 for uh, storage capacity and 1400 metric ton for the pre cooling. Then, incoming product temperature also considered as 35 degrees Celsius with cool down period 72 hours. So, this data you have to consider that is in the design data book, uh, you have to make these necessary modifications. Uh, in the conclusion section, uh, the actually you have to write that is the Already in your case, already the cold storage is developed and the refrigeration system is also installed to meet the requirement of onion. And based on the onion, the maximum capacity of refrigeration system is 530 TR, which generally requires during combined chilling and holding of the product that is onion at the chambers. And the maximum storage load system can bear is 390 TR, which requires when there is no pre-cooling. Uh, then in the second point, the refrigeration load you supposed to calculate for your prescribed product, that is for A division cucumber, B division carrots, and C division potatoes on the system. Uh, so that TR capacity you can write here, uh, which occurs during the combined 1400 metric ton chilling and 8400 metric ton product at the chamber. So considering this capacity, uh, calculate TR capacity and also calculate the regular load on the system uh, without pre-cooling. So this calculations you have to do. Based on the calculations, uh, comparing point one and two, you will realize or you will come to know whether refrigeration load considering your product is greater than 5 TF, uh, 530 TR or less than 530 TR. Suppose if it is greater than, uh, and accordingly the last point you have to write that is the cold storage which is designed for onion, but can be used for storing either cucumber, carrot or potatoes as well, with chilling of some dash dash metric ton or and holding of dash dash metric ton. Now this dash dash figure is greater than 1400 here, if uh, the refrigeration load is less, means if the refrigeration load is less, means it can accommodate more num more uh, number of products. So it, this value is greater than 1400 metric ton. If this value is less, means refrigeration load is less. Similarly, this value is also less than uh, greater than 8400 when this is less, and vice versa. So you have to write your own conclusions based on your calculation part. So this conclusion is supposed to write in your experiment. So as far as the content of uh, this experiment is concerned, it should be handwritten with a problem statement uh, similar to the problem statement only change the product. Then introduction part, in the introduction part only uh, uh, specify one part for your product. Then the basic design data most of the data is same except the indoor design conditions and the product properties are different. Then the layout remains same. Then the refrigeration load you have to estimate based on your product. The conclusion as per the previous slide, that is slide number 15, uh, especially the first point is common, but 
last remaining three points that it, 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 these are the specific points in your product. Then you have to uh, attach the appendix of simulator as well. Simulator you have to use for cross cross check your answers. So after this, make a single PDF and you have to upload this PDF under the section. So for example, you have to upload this in the experiment number three. So in the laboratory section, click on experiment number three, where you'll find two PDFs. So first PDF, you'll get some data of your product that is extracted from Asherah handbook, refrigeration vegetables. So in the storage vegetables corresponding to your product, suppose uh, if you go below that vegetables are there. So here are the carrots. So this particular para you have to write in the introduction section. So based on uh, that is a theory part. And along with the temperature conditions are already given. Uh, but uh, remaining things you extract from design data book like this respiration rate and specifically or from the Google. Secondly, this is a simulator. Uh, you have to download this simulator. So this simulator you can use for a cross check your answers. Uh, so if you put wherever the green cells are there, there you have to put your values like indoor design conditions vary from product to product, as well as the respiration rate, specific heat. So after putting the data, you get some TR capacity. If this TR capacity is greater, then 530 TR, you have to adjust the values of product to be stored uh, and get the values below 530 TR and vice versa. Accordingly, uh, save this simulator and take a PDF and attach to the main uh, write-up. And finally, you upload this particular write-up here. So the learning outcome of this part, so at the end of this particular experiment, uh, you will be able to identify different heat sources of cold storage. Then you will be able to determine transmission load of cold storage or any other building. Then uh, you can be, uh, you will be able to determine the product load, both holding as well as chilling of cold storage, chilling of the product for the cold storage. So with this, we have finished part one. So the next session, we will discuss the part two where we'll discuss the process layout of uh, the equipment, as well as the selection of uh, various equipments of the refrigeration system. Thank you very much.